You know, electronics over the last several years have really exploded in the world of fishing. And for those that aren't professional anglers like Gary here, getting used to your electronics can be daunting. And I'll tell you what, we have Gary Klein here. We're not gonna concentrate on fishing today. We're gonna talk about how you can utilize your electronics to the fullest and put more fish in your boat. You ready to get started, Gary? Yes, I am. All right. So Gary, the first thing that many people want to do when they go to a lake, whether they know it or they don't know it, is look at their mapping and figure out where they're going to fish for the day, right? Uh, to me, the mapping is so important because what it does for an angler, it allows me to view the environment that I'm about to fish. So basically, whether you're talking about the wind or the weather that you have for the day, you're going to fish a different part of the lake, right? I can basically execute a game plan based on time year type of lake and the main species of fish that live in that lake. The lake that we have on the map right now, we're on Lake Norman, is a rather large lake. So I can sit here and look at the map and say, okay, you know, it's pre-spawn. These fish are going to be moving in. So I'm going to follow the leadings moving back into the shallow spawn flats. Look at the contour lead in here, contour lead in here. So what that does now as an angler, I figure I'm gonna fish here, I'm gonna fish here, I'm gonna fish here. And I've never been to this lake before, but I just put together, you know, a pretty good little deal. And if you take a look at this map, this is our Laurent C map. And the cool thing about this electronics, it allows an angler to kind of custom the colors for, you know, what they're used to on depth ranges. Now when I pull out, I know where all the shallow runouts are and the deep lead-ins. It just becomes so easy. So Gary, we've located our, our map and we're gonna, we found out where we want to fish and color-coded it. Now we're gonna transition over to our down scan and our side scan in order to find those structures that we want to key in on. Yeah, the two of these are traditional transducer that actually sends a signal out in the form of a cone. Um, my down scan has a more of a narrow beam that's wide. It's showing me the same information, but giving me two different views of that same information. So the cone being round shows vertical very well, but my down shows detail better. So I always run the two side by side all the time. Yeah, fish are... Based on the arcs? Fish are something of some kind. If I was fishing and those were the fish that I was looking for, I'm gonna to go to my active target. If I run over them, I'm not gonna to continue to run over them. Here's a, a block or something that I just ran over. So I'm gonna throw a waypoint on that. And then we'll, I'll go back and we'll look at that on our active target. And here, you know, I'm just scanning, just kind of painting a picture of it. There it is right there. See, it's at 50. And it's at 50. That was at 50 50 yards ahead of you. Yeah, you know, fish coming off of it. Instead of, you know, me spending 30 minutes out here trying to find what I saw, I can see it in front of Now watch when I go over it. There you are at 70, 60. Yep. Up. I'm trying to go towards them. Now whether they allow me to run over them or not, I don't know. This will blow your mind about what you thought you knew about fishing, and it just, it changes everything. After spending a little bit of time looking at this section of the lake, I notice what appears to be like a bar or maybe an old road bed that splits these two ridges right here. So I ran over here just to take a look at it. I'm running my side scan, down scan, and my 2D, and we're fixing right over the top of it. So we'll see what it is. Then you can see real easy how we're sitting in 30, which should be in the middle of the trough, and we should be coming up on it here like right now. And you can see the rise come up. Definitely flat on top. I didn't see a bridge, but I'm gonna swing around and make another pass. But there's a little school of fish right there on my side scan, and a group of fish right but there. But by using your map, then your 2D and your side scan, you're able to hone in on it real quick. Well, I mean, we located this on the map just a couple minutes ago and figured, hey, look, we're in the area, let's go look at it. Make one pass, this is our second pass on it, and you get a really good feel for what it is that we're looking for. But you naturally see the road bed pavement, probably the old pavement on top. And I'm gonna get out in this trough and see if I can't find them again and I'll drop active target and we'll chase them. See that school of fish right here on the side scan. I'm gonna throw a waypoint on those, turn the big engine off and I'm gonna go up front, drop active target and see how quick we can get on that school of fish right there. And let's see if I can't get out here and scan this. Does it look like a pretty cool little group of fish? There, there's your group of fish at 20, 
If you have a flip stick and a jig, you make that little presentation you're real precise. With this active target and open water, it gives you that same precision. To be able to come to something that we've never been to before, idle it, throw a waypoint out, and turn back around and come right back to it that quick. Literally minutes to find fish, and we did exactly what he does in order to put fish in the boat. We went from our mapping, we found a structure, we went to 2D, we went to our side scan to find it more, and then we even further identified active fish with our active target. You can make it as simple or complex as you want. The key is don't be intimidated by your electronics. Use it as a tool. Go out, practice with it, and you'll put more fish in the boat. I want to thank Gary Klein for joining us today. I'm Larry Ladowski. More Midwest is right around the corner, and we'll catch you later.